Hello, it's day number 283. This is Tamara Hunter, and it is 365 Days of Awesome. Celebrate success through service Saturday. And we have our service hero of today, Rick Brendan. <laughs> and, you know, let me tell you a little bit, brag a little bit about Rick. And as I teased, if you will, but really not teasing about why it is that I wanted to feature Rick today as a service hero it is because of a number of reasons in truth, but I wanted him to share a particular story that I got to find out about at an event not long ago that has inspired me in many ways. I've thought about it in a number of times. And this is a man that's out there serving many and he's found a way to do it in win, win, win situations. And so, <laughs> Rick, I want to welcome you to today and to our show and and just say how honored I am that you're here with me right now. Well, thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. I was so grateful to have met you a few times, but to really get a chance to talk at the last event uh, really did warm my heart as well. So thank you for the opportunity. You know, let's dive into this because, you know, the thing that Let's kind of go go over. I looked for an image. I didn't find one of the two of us interviewing. Found the live feed, and I'll probably add that <laughs> to this at some point. But you and I were visiting at the Kiss the Monkeys Beverly Hills event that took place not long ago in the beautiful sunshine of Southern California. It Amen. was yeah, it was quite the warm day and and yet we were all having a way of you know getting together and making the mess of it and and sharing our stories sharing um what it is that we were there to do and kiss the monkeys is such an amazing group first of all absolutely you know, tell us how you got involved with them well i i was living in hawaii and i was asked to uh come speak at a dear friends uh event at the end of may i wasn't planning to move from Hawaii till the middle of June, uh, just before an event, but he asked me to come out and speak, Carlos Saqueta, uh, oh, the yes. work like an immigrant author and just a uh, brother from another mother at this point. There you mm -hmm. go. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You guys and, are, uh, you're like the dynamite duo. <laughs> so um, he didn't know I was still on Hawaii. He thought I was right in San Diego. And and then he said, oh no, you okay, you don't have to come. And I was like, no, no, I. If you want me to come speak, I'll come and speak. And so I got on a plane um, that very day because the event was the next day. And again, thought I was already there locally. But long story short, I called a friend, asked if I could make this a permanent move. And a little mir mini miracle. I was It was 6 o'clock at night. I had to be at the airport at 9 o'clock. Uh, there was no places open to do those kind of moves and things. I had this four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath house and a filled with furniture, and that's why I would have had to come back two more times just to liquidate all the furniture, make sure, get a $15,000 deposit back on the home. And so I just told a simple friend in San Diego, she heard a little sigh, and she says, what was that for? And I said, oh, I said, just the thought of going back and forth, 12 hours round trip, two more times, killing me. And she says, well, what would it take to make this a permanent move? And I said, well, it would take a miracle. And she's like, what kind of miracle? I said, well, I, I've got a house full of furniture. Uh, you know, I have to have it empty. And I got three hours before I have to get to the airport. There's not a, a Home Depot or anything open where I could go get some labor and rent a truck. I said, it's just, it's just not possible. And she says, well, you pack like you're moving forever, and I'll worry about the miracle. And she's in San Diego. She's never been to Hawaii. But a few minutes later, I started getting calls from a New Hope Horizon church and people saying, is it true that we can come just – Get for, Oh, she, she asked me before she did this, she said, do you need to make money from selling this furniture and things? Is that why you need to come back? And I said, oh, no, I, I actually don't need to make money from it. You know, I, I have money. I, I just don't have the time to go back and forth 24 more hours. And so she said, boom. And then she put this ad out there on this New Hope Horizon Church. And I had truckloads of people coming, uh, just literally taking stuff out, literally let, look on their face like, so I can just walk away with it, you know, and I'm like, yep. And anyway, long story short, that was my permanent move. I went there the next day, hooked up with Carlos again, and spoke at his event. And Al Harris, one of the founders of Kiss the Monkeys, was one of the attendees at the event. And uh, we just really connected. Um, I, I've, I've lived all over Europe. I know England very, very well. I was an ambassador to England back in the early uh, 
uh, late eighties, I should say. And long story short, uh, we spent the next few days getting together at the Think and Grow Rich Legacy Tour. And of course, um, I was invited to come to the Kiss the Monkeys event in Rancho Santa Fe, black tie event. So here I just moved from Hawaii where you literally don't have suits even for church. It looks almost inappropriate to wear a suit because everyone is so casually dressed all the time. So had to go get a tuxedo, everything else. Uh, Carlos and I were hanging out left and right at this event. We showed up at uh, Kiss the Monkeys and the biggest thing where, I mean, I, I'd met Al a few times, got to connect, met Raquel a couple times, the other founder and his, his better half, if you will. And where we really bonded, and this is a truth I've found in so many times, there was no, um, you know, plan on my part to like, mm, this would be a way to good bond with this gentleman. Uh, I literally just helped clean up. I don't smoke, drink, or do drugs. So here I was clear headed at the end of the party, two o'clock in the morning. I see people who are part of their staff, you know, picking up things and doing things. I just jump in and start grabbing things and cleaning up too, just like my parents raised me. We got done with everything inside. I went to go take a break, get some fresh air, found a chair out in the, out in the driveway, just chilling, talking, having some fun. And I see Al all dressed up and he's packing a huge load of something all the way out around into the dark. And I'm like, where is he going? You know, I mean, and it took him a long time to come back. And I finally said, would you like a hand? And you know, I didn't, I didn't offer the obvious advice of why don't you move whatever vehicle it is closer, <laughs> but we just started making all these trips and I'm not kidding when I say, uh, we didn't leave until three 43 in the morning. I never, you know, changed out of my tux. I was just packing these huge loads of things. And that's where you really bond and connect with people is you pick up and help them, you know, cut a couple hours off of their task in the middle of the night, sharing stories, laughing our brains out. And that's where this friendship was formed. Uh, I had no idea I was going to be a neighbor and <laughs> live, you know, uh, right next to him in Redondo Beach. I didn't even know that time that he lived in Redondo Beach. And here we connect again a few weeks later, and I'm sitting here as a neighbor. So that's how it's all happened. Uh, that's why I obviously got to know and love both of them. I've been to their house several times, and that's why I chose to sponsor uh, that event that we saw each other again at the Beverly Hills Ball. Right, right. And I did not know you were one of their neighbors. I, I knew rest of the story somewhat. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I want to say that is what I find so endearing about you as an individual. You have incredible stories of, of hope and, and true miracles. And you, as everybody will be finding out here soon, you 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 know a thing or two, and you've been <laughs> successful a day or two, and and yet you are as humble as they come. You're willing you. to pitch in. You're willing to do that. You're willing to support a friend. You're willing to be there for others in need. And you mentioned it, and 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 that's where I want to go next because this is a really big part of what has. Truly inspired me, and I don't want to get too weepy, but I do. I have my my t tissue here somewhere. I have my well, my. my if, uh, if I may share one thing, that's kind of a yes. a preframe for what we're about to talk about, uh, um, setting the standard for where uh, society is at as a whole in America right now, and many many places around the world are not even in, you know, what I think is a depressed area of what we're in right now in America. The reason why I came here to Redondo Beach specifically and not San Diego where I was originally moving to was that a, a very dear friend of mine, somebody that I've, I've done several you know, multi-million dollar projects with over the years, uh, this guy is a, a total giver in the sense of helping peak performance athletes, professional athletes, you know, uh, he's a vegan herbalist himself, he looks like a, you know, NFL linebacker, he's six foot three or four, he's 240 pounds, just a intelligent guy beyond means. And he was hit, hit on in a car accident where someone was driving recklessly, crossed over the line and just hit him head on, almost killed him in the accident. Uh, the, also the passenger in the car. Uh, fortunately, he lived and unfortunately, he had this massive back injury where they had to uh, take bones off of his hips and mm -hmm. reconstruct the L4 and L5 vertebrae in his back, steel plates and pins. I mean, just a, a multi-hour surgery. And here I'm, I'm finding out about all this stuff when I'm still in Hawaii, uh, still already planning to move at some point to San Diego. And he's not at all asking me to come help. He's just simply sharing 
you know, the state of the, the union, so to speak, with his own family. He's got a huge extended family in Chicago and New York, tons of love and support, people wanting to come out and help him for his surgery. But then he talks about the recovery time, and he's saying, you know, several months. And all of a sudden you saw these faces like, oh, uh, uh, he's they're just like, as much as we love you and want to come out there, they're living paycheck to paycheck, where they said, my work will let me come out there for a week or two, and, and they're not going to pay me because I don't have any more vacation time left, but that's about all I can really do. And and that was the story for everybody. And and again, on top of that, most people weren't big enough to really add any physical help because the guy is so big and just a big burly dude. And I just sat here saying, well, I, I don't have to work. I don't have to go anywhere. I can I can do what I do from anywhere. And I offered to move to Redondo Beach, was where he lived, and to be with him for his surgery, take care of him afterwards. And he was just like, you know, because, because of the accident, he hasn't worked. He doesn't have all the the loads of cash that he had before. He's like, Oh dude, I, that's the whole point. I couldn't pay my family. I can't pay you. And I was like, dude, I I don't need to work. I'm not unemployed. I'm unemployable. And I Mm -hmm. said, I can, I can come and just be of service. And he was just like, you know, we were friends before, but now we're right. Brothers beyond beyond. And the greatest benefit of this whole thing is that now he knows what I do. He's witnessed it firsthand. And yesterday he sat here applying to buy one of these amazing stores that we're talking about after I've been here for literally a month since uh, July, uh, June 16th is when I arrived here on Father's Day and watching me for a month, watching all the, the people I've been able to help, the money I've been able to make. And he's just like, how can I get one of these stores? You know, so just yesterday, this dear friend of mine who, again, I don't talk to friends. I don't talk to individuals that I know and like, oh, hey, I got this thing that might be a benefit. I just don't do that. But here he overheard conversations, witnessed things in person. And he just literally said, what about me? <laughs> like, I would like to have a, a, a story. You know, so I was like, I, I never even thought to, it wasn't that I did want to offer to you. I just never wanted to sound like I'm coming here offering something. And he's like, no, I, I'm literally tortured by hearing all these conversations. And and so, yeah, he just literally applied yesterday to uh, join and, and be part of what we're doing. You will not believe. I, I am almost in disbelief. And that doesn't happen a lot. But the story you just shared right now is pretty incredible because my nonprofit that I started the why behind my why was actually my mother. My mother was in a car accident 34 years before she ended up passing away of cancer. Wow. She had seven of her vertebrae shattered. She had 27 major surgeries of which she had Harrington rods, cages, electrodes, all of the above. She was told she would never walk at least the majority of her life, that she would be in a wheelchair at some point in time. And let me tell you this, she never was, not until the very end when she was had to be brought back in hospice. Uh Other than that, she always, always got beyond her injuries. She did too have to have the donate to herself from her hips. And then she had additional don't you know donor bone and and so as you're telling your friend's story right now and the fact that you are serving with you know him that's why my mom ended up with me for all those years and because they do they need assistance and yet she's viable i mean my goodness you know she it only changes a changes a portion of what they who they are and and they do need to heal and the fact that you're working with them and you have this program we're going to be talking about and i don't want to talk about it until we talk about your parents sure, sure. Okay. um we've got amy morrison here of the friend zone <laughs> and she's going to be helping me with some amazing things that i'm up to um, and then we've got Carol, who is one of our Chemo Buddies for Life ambassadors. I'm glad to see you both here. Good morning, both of you. And I, I have a feeling both of you are going to be interested in what it is that Rick is going to be sharing here soon with us all. Because I can't see that anybody is not going to be. And and do I truly 100% understand it yet? I will be honest, not completely. However, do I plan sure. on understanding it? I do completely you know and so um i'm i'm thrilled to be visiting with you and and let's continue with the story so you 
let's step back before before now with your friend that you were just telling us about that was in the car accident i i am so proud of your friend and i would would you know i'm there rooting because i understand <laughs> and you know he's yeah. gonna be fine he's just gonna be fine get through it my mom certainly did um you are close to your family you are someone you grew up in idaho right yes since the and, fourth grade we moved and stayed my dad made a commitment because we used to move around because of his engineering work and i was mr social butterfly extrovert that i loved like moving great a whole new set of friends i packed my bags and ready to go my brother on the other hand um was a very popular kid student you know class president star athlete amazing student himself but he did not like the moving around a lot and right when we were about to move to our our seventh city you know seventh school for him in five years my brother just literally did the old oliver twist like please father you know please sir you know like and he just said i've been to six schools in five years you know and and again he doesn't have a british accent but he was just this no, little boy begging my father story. sorry yeah <laughs> just begging him not to go. And he said, I've been in six schools in five years. And my dad said, that's, that's impossible. And my brother was like, boom, 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 starts listing him off. And my dad was like, just mortified and just made a commitment right then and there. He says, I'm not going to move again. We're, we, we lived on this amazing ranch outside of Spokane, just a family ranch. And we literally moved to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, this beautiful, uh, you know, this big city for us because we lived out in the, in the country uh, but now we're moving to a big city of 25,000 people and just it's gorgeous beyond means. It's one of these four seasons types place. And and he just says he made a commitment. I will not move until Ricky, the baby, me uh, graduates at least from high school. And he kept that promise. Uh, they still stayed there even after we went off to, to high school and college and things like that. So, yes, that's from the fourth grade on. I've lived in Idaho as my main place until I left uh, to go off to college. And, and when you talk about your parents and, and your mom and your dad, and when you talk about your brother, too, because we that's part of all of this, is that you really have, I want to say, kind of that, that feeling of, and, and take it right, I hope, that leave it to Bieber kind of thing. You know, that, that, that thing that, that old-fashioned values, that you really care for each <laughs> other. There's, there's love in the home. There's, you know, respect in the home. There's, there's joy in the yeah. home. And, and that's the thing that came through as you were sharing. I mean, here we're, we're a little hot. It was a little warm that day, you know, we're all dressed up to the nines and we're doing an interview. <laughs> and yet, and yet when you talked, that came out in your countenance and your smile and your eyes in your spirit. <laughs> And, and, you know, and I want you to be able to talk about it. I'm going to bring up a picture because it's one yeah. that I absolutely love about, you know, here's your parents. I mean, look yeah, at my, them. My, my mom and dad were, um, they were in the Peace Corps when they first got married. My mother gave my dad uh, uh, all these requirements and saying, if we're getting married, we're either doing a four-year uh, mission with the church or we're doing a two-and-a-half-year, you know, project with the Peace Corps. And my, my father being an engineer and everything, he said, I think we could, you know, make the most impact with your school teaching background, sewing, dancing, everything that we do together, and my engineering work, we could really exponentially improve these villages that we would be assigned to. They didn't know where in the world they would be assigned to, but they knew it was going to be, uh, you know, not first world countries. That's not what the Peace Corps does. And so they got assigned to Peru. Uh, they learned to speak Spanish fluently, and to their, my dad's dying day and to my mother to this day, uh, still speak Spanish fluently, and my mother even has worked where her entire work was around speaking Spanish the whole time. And so she's taught at every single level, not teaching English as a second language or something like that, but literally teaching every single subject of history, science, math, etc., all in Spanish. So we're not just talking about, so, oh, I speak a little Spanish. She's fluent. And those kind of things were amazing to me. Uh, we got to go back. I say we, my brother and I, when I was six and my brother was eight, my father took a job in Lima, Peru, and my mother took the opportunity to retrace all the different villages and cities that they you know, supported for two and a half years 
and they took my brother and I around at that time to re-see every single thing that they did. And it was just this mind-opening opportunity for me, see people of different color, see people speaking a different language, and I just, it began a fire in my belly to want to know more about the whole world. And that's why I got into international relations, international business, and have you know, taken my mom to 34 countries around the world, myself to many, many more than that. Uh, it's just been a passion. It started at that very young age. So the last thing I'll say about my mom and dad, as far as their love for each other, uh, the support that they gave to their kids, meaning I would feel like an absolute idiot <laughs> if I wasn't... Uh, you know, successful in doing great things with all the love and support that I had. Uh, my parents didn't have money. My dad walked away from money in his family, uh, have this gorgeous mansion he could have lived in in Long Island. And he walked away from all of that because he wanted to walk up and down the mountains of Idaho uh, as one of the first hired engineers. They used to contract out to engineers, but this was one of the first rounds of actually hiring engineers for the Forest Service. And that's where he met my mother in Idaho. Uh, just fell in love and, and just had this amazing story, kids, etc. But the biggest thing for us as children was not just learning how to work hard and, and take care of things that depended on you, animals, you know, fruits, vegetables. If you don't weed them, they're going to die. If you don't water them, they're going to die. You know, God gives the sunlight, gives these things, but man, you need to make sure the weeds are around, make sure to pick the, the fruits off their vines so they can go. You need to snip and prune and and then the live animals, same thing. If we're not fed, we're going to die. If we're not watered, we're going to die. And so this growing that kind of thing inside of you, being able to take care of other people was something very young in our lifetime. But when we got to the age of playing sports and, and accomplishing things, my parents absolutely made us believe that we could do anything, right? And being in a situation in a position to Listen, we don't have the money. We told us very early on, we don't have the money for you to go to college. We won't have the money you know, saved up for you to go to college. But I'll tell you what, schools literally pay for the brightest, uh, the most accomplished, the most charismatic people to come to their schools because it makes them look good. They want the best of the best of their schools. So yes, if you have the highest academia and you're a well-rounded person, get involved in other things, supporting groups and you know, getting the student body, getting the giving back to society, joining this group and that. Oh, and they threw in the sports thing. They said, and by the way, if you are amazing in sports, that increases your chances. So uh, my brother and I were just, I guess, a little bit overachieving in the standpoint of let's go make it happen. And we excelled in sports. I won state titles in four separate sports and went on to win the back-to-back -back national, go to back-to-back -back national championships and win the national championship for the University of Colorado uh, under a full ride scholarship, and I had full rides to Stanford and other amazing schools, but I had the Holy Spirit literally come to me in my dreams. I'd never had this happen before. I'd had validations of things that I'd asked and things like that, but this is after my trips to Stanford, my trip to Colorado. I'm on my trip to Arizona State University, about to go to UCLA, and I am literally bombarded with dreams every single night in my sleep. I gave a handshake promise to Stanford's coach, Jack Elway. I said, I've been coming here since I was a teenager in high school. I mean, just this is where I was going. The best combination of academics and athletics, respected yet, right, uh, not some Ivy League uh, school where if I dominate in the Ivy Leagues, what does the NFL care? They're like, well, we don't know what he can really do. So Pac-10, high academics, Stanford's where I'm going. Shook hands, gave my handshake promise, I'm coming here. Next trips to Colorado, and after that, I just kept having the Holy Spirit visit me in my dreams, telling me I'm supposed to go to Colorado, as obvious as a burning bush. I talked to my dad 10 days in a row of this. I said, Dad, have you ever had you know, the Holy Spirit just like right in your dreams telling you something so specific? And he's like, no. And he says, but if I did, you know, and he says, I just might listen to something like that. And I, and I just, I kept praying about it. I went and talked to the head coach, Jack Elway. I asked for permission to break my handshake promise and to follow mm -hmm. this, this underlying belly of going to Colorado. And Colorado was horrible. This was literally not a good idea in the sense of their past successes. And yet here it was, my dream and passion of going and being the best, fighting for this and winning national championships and being the number one team in the country who knew? Well, God knew and literally guided me to the right school, had this most amazing experience ever. And all I'll say before that I'll be quiet about my parents is that they made a commitment 
when we were super young that they would be at everything. And people noticed, kids noticed, other parents noticed. Some kids thought that my family was wealthy because how can they afford to be here at an afternoon game or on a weekday? Why aren't they at work? Oh, they must be wealthy. Nope. My parents made sacrifices financially to make sure that they were always at one of our games. There's two kids, two parents. If they could, if we weren't on the same sport, the same team, they'd flip a coin and one would go with one, one would go the other. And because we were such a dominating school, uh, we'd have to go sometimes 8, 10, 12 hours, 16 hours to go play someone else that was equal to us. And they would be there, you know, like, oh, yeah, here we are. Yeah, we had to leave two days ago, but we're here. And they would take the time off work without pay because obviously they used up their vacation quickly. But that's the kind of support I had. And that's the last thing I'll say that uh, other kids noticed um, getting a letter from my dad called the weekly boys letter. Every single week he wrote us a letter. And that was one of the things that the kids made fun of in the freshman locker room. The upperclassmen like, you know, taking the mail and, oh, Ricky's got his little letter. And one of these guys jumped in on my behalf and said, you know, to the guy who was being a bully at that moment, you know, you know, you, you, you don't even know your dad, you know, so, you know, you know, trying to, trying to be, trying to put him back in his place and, you know, have the energy, like give the kid this letter back, you know? Well, next thing you know, that guy's like, hey, why don't you read it out loud? And it wasn't a, it wasn't a, uh, you know, a, a humiliation thing. He was literally like, I'd love to hear the letter. And I was like, is this a setup or something? And, you know, you're not even allowed into the upper classroom's locker room. It's my only probably time in my life I'll ever feel segregation, the freshman locker room versus the rest of the upperclassmen. But here I am being asked to come in. I thought it was punishment, um, like some kind of humiliation thing, like they're making fun of me. But here they are sitting around like kids listening to Santa Claus read, read a, a, a Christmas story just on the edge of their seat. And these weren't, you know, melodic, beautiful written letters, These is a guy who's an engineer, is like 6.8 hours of productivity doing this, doing that, and the punchline is that kind of stuff just, uh, eventually there was 50, 60 guys sitting there listening to the letter every single week and would insist, like, come on, Rick, come on, we got to get out there, let's get your letter, and I'm like, I'm coming, I'm coming, and these are the kind of things I shared on his deathbed, uh, didn't know if he was conscious, he certainly knew, I, I, I felt all these things before he passed away, but all the nurses in the room as I was telling these stories and sharing these things, one by one, they were just bursting in tears just <laughs> as I was sharing these amazing things. And that's the kind of thing that I am so grateful for. That's the kind of thing that I try to do as a father myself. You know, my world's greatest relationship in this world is my son. And he lives with me, travels with me, does work with me. Yeah. And, uh, and <laughs> it's just been an amazing joy and a gift to model for him, uh, not only how to be a great parent, but to how to, how to treat people, whether it's women, I'm, I'm uh, date, showing him how to honor, just like my father honored my mother, showing him how to put these people on a pedestal and cherish and treat them like your queen and watching him now as a 21 year old man, uh, have all these <laughs> amazing, uh, work ethic, academia, you know, his prowess in the academics in sports as a human being and now in business are just you know, it's what life is all about, passing on these amazing uh, traits and things to your children, watching them become these people. So I promise I'll be quiet now and say, Oh, no, you know, you. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure everybody is just as, as um, touched as I am right now. And now you guys understand why I was so excited to have Rick on. And yes, I do have my tissue here because I know what we're going to be talking about. And and uh, I had no idea some of the story. It just gets better. Can I just say it does? Um, I love the weekly boys letter. Boys story or boys letter? Boys letter. Weekly boys letter. The weekly boys letter. I love it. I love it. It's like, okay. Uh, you know, I would love to challenge people. If you feel so inspired to do such a letter, incorporate it. You wouldn't mind, would you, Rick? No, I think it's an amazing, amazing act of love. These things are something that uh, one of my best friends I've known since I was nine years old, uh, Cheryl Rush, she literally, because I was like, I, I didn't know that other people requested that they would be sent a copy of this weekly book because they had to hear me talk about it. And so just uh, a year ago or so, maybe it was a year and a half ago now, I was you know, living up in Iowa, taking care of my mom, and she's like, 
I have all the weekly boys letters, you know, like, and I go, what, you know, and she's like, yeah, and she made copies of this stuff, so she sent us these files, and we were just reading through these things, and it was just, I mean, what a journal record of someone's life, and all of our lives, because of course, he's not just talking about himself, he's saying, you know, Joey did this, my mother's name is Joey, and he's talking about things he's doing, he's talking about things she's doing, all included in the letter, of course, and it's just a a blow by blow document of our lives for all those years. When they moved to Saipan and Guam, that's when he started that commitment uh, because he took this opportunity there to give my mom her dream, big bucket list, live on a tropical island. And that's not my dad's idea of paradise, but he said, I'd, I'd do this for my queen. And he accepted this job out there to give her that, um, that gift. And the funniest thing after two plus years, two and a half years, whatever they were there, he's like 85 degrees. 85% humidity, 85 inches of rain. Hey, you call that paradise, you know, <laughs> like take it. Uh, but he was happy to, you know, finally be released of this dream and come back to Idaho. Uh, but he made that commitment for my mother. And uh, I just appreciate those little gestures. And it's not little, but I do appreciate that. So have you ever thought, I'm sure others are thinking the same thing that I am right now. Have you ever thought of publishing them in some type of a book? I have. Um, my, my dad just passed in, in 2016, and we've been focused on my mother's uh, battle uh, this whole time. It just hasn't been the, the, the right time for that, but that certainly is something we've thought about. And like, uh, I think we were thinking about it when my friend came forward with like, I've got most of the letters, you know, and stuff. But because right. uh, we had to get rid of a lot of things when my uh, after my dad passed, and you know, things that Idaho makes you do to um, be able to come into that type of hospital situation, a situation my mother was, was fighting. And so we had to get rid of a lot of the stuff and there just wasn't time to, oh, let's put this off to the side. And, and so I, I think a lot of the stuff was lost, but then here comes this friend like, oh, I've been keeping track of everything. And that's what she does. So she's amazing. You know, it, it, it's amazing when you do have those kind of people in your world. And it doesn't surprise me because that's the kind of person <laughs> that you are. And it's not surprising because that's the kind of people that your parents are. Or, and, you know, because I and I'm talking in the in the present because that's the sure. way I still believe. OK, so let's talk about I, I said that we were going to be hearing a story about a miracle. And and when you told me this story, uh it, it has it has stuck with me and 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 I've I have actually now it's pretty incredible you know when it's like when you're buying a car right you start looking at a particular kind of car and then all of a sudden all those kind of cars you see on the street you, know, you didn't yeah. notice them so much then but I after talking with you a couple of other people have come into my world and talked about some pretty significant miracles that have taken place too and and it it just is so encouraging to me and especially and especially because of a community that I have a nonprofit and I'm serving and that that all things are possible, that anything is possible. So let's I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you closer here and so people can see as we talk. Why don't you tell us about the story you you visited with me on the red carpet about when we talked about uh, the healing that can take place and that we were, you know, that I had a nonprofit that was serving people that are affected by cancer. And you told me a story. Why don't you go ahead? Well, uh, my mother is always referred to as the energizer bunny because, uh, we both, we both have a gift of gab. Uh, she's called Wendy Joe from Idaho. Uh, does a lot of self deprecating humor about her, you know, chitty chatty self. Uh, I never, you know, of course I realize I have a gift of gab as well. I don't ever do self-deprecating humor about it because I like me. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, that's but, uh, a thing. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but yeah, one day she literally, uh, I was out looking at homes in California. We talk all the time, like little school kids and, and I'm sitting here talking to her and she says, you know, I've always, you know, uh, refers to me as the energizer bunny. And I'm like, yeah, of course, like, duh, like everybody does. And she goes, well, I'm just not feeling that way right now. And I haven't been lately. And I was like, oh, you know, and this was like on a Sunday. And the very next day she went in and, and got the results, you know, went into a, to a doctor, did some blood work and, you know, started finding out these things about her blood, started getting the first signs of 
what later became cancer and uh, trying to do a colonoscopy to find out why she was having certain uh, symptoms that were she was describing when she went into the doctor. And they couldn't do the colonoscopy because they couldn't get uh, the around some, something's blocking here and it turned out to be a you know softball sized mass in her colon. And uh, here she is with stage four colorectal cancer, um, doing all these other surgeries and things like that, finding out it's all up through her lymph nodes and just one thing after another, it was super fast, super serious. She had five surgeries in 10 days. And after this, she wasn't talking. Uh, I'm still in Los Angeles. I'm doing a move. I'm taking care of my son. I've got a lot of things going on. And the doctor calls on October 1st, 2016 and said, you need to come immediately. Uh, she's not going to make it. She's just been squeezing fingers for yeses and nos. And I'm just right. I had movers literally moving in that very morning and I just dropped everything. I told my son, uh, who was 18 at the time. And I said, listen, I had an experience with my grandmom where we just celebrated this amazing birthday, uh, a, a month before her actual passing. And she was swimming and jogging and walking and doing all these amazing things. Top of health. She got brain cancer within a month. She was dead. And those last few, uh, that last couple of weeks that I was there with my mom, watching my grandma in such deterioration really affected me. And I, you know, grandma knows how much I loved her. Uh, I wish that I had kept the visual and the memory of seeing her at the peak of everything uh, that month before birthday and, and not seeing her at this deteriorated state. And so I shared that story, gave him the choice. I said, I don't know what it's going to be like, but, you know, she's squeezing fingers and this and that. And he said, I'll stay here and honor and cherish Grandma Joy, you know, the way that I remember her. And that's what he did. He stayed home. I went up there. My dad, this giant of a man who's nicknamed Moose, where I'm a very giant guy. Uh, and you know, seeing him in the in this, you know, later stage in life, this picture, you know, doesn't have the same uh, viewpoint, but still a very powerful guy. And literally praying to God out loud for everyone to hear to please take him instead of his wife of 52 years and just saying, you know, she doesn't deserve this and she's done everything. He says, I've had the most amazing life, most amazing friends, most amazing kids and grandkids take me. And we're all like, you know, pat him on the back, very valid request, but it's not how it works. I wish, you know, and my dad just said, you have no idea. <laughs> and, my dad was suddenly with a random uh, blood clot from his legs to his heart. He went in, we just had left it. My mom just got out of the hospital, uh, just literally left my dad 45 minutes earlier. Um, I dropped her off with a home health care nurse. I was picking up some groceries to make some things happen. I get this call from some gal at the hospital, and she's like, honey, are you still with your mom? And, you know, long story short, she just, I said, no, she's at this nurse at the house. And I said, what's up? You know, like, and, and she says, honey, could you swing by and pick her up and get on back down here to the hospital and you know drive as quickly as you can, as safely as you can? I said, well, yes, to answer your question, I can do that, but, but why? And she's like, well, your father's gone into cardiac arrest and we're wheeling him down to ICU and we're performing CPR trying to get his heart beating again. And of course, she'd introduced herself at the beginning of the call. I certainly remembered what it was and I said something like, what was your name again? Kathy, was it? I said, Kathy, you should lead with that. I said, I feel like we've been flirting and chit-chatting for the last couple of minutes. But I got my mom rushed down there. My father had a do not resuscitate order in, you know, at the hospital. Like that's a legal document saying do not resuscitate me. And they're like, eh, we love Joey so much. We know them so much. We know that he would want his kids and wife to be here. So they resuscitated him four times before we got there. And I'm walking in, I see the huge curtain, I see the two doctors, eight nurses around them, and they stop me and wheel me into another sidebar room, put me in there. My mom's still in a wheelchair. She just got to the hospital the day before. And we're, we're both sitting here like, why, why aren't we in, you know, seeing my dad? That's why we came down here. And here comes the head surgeon and a female chaplain. I'm still just as clueless as anything. I have no concept that this is anywhere near the end of my dad's life. And he's like, well, here's the deal. And he's trying to explain. We revived him four times and haven't been able to maintain his own blood pressure because of this, this random blood clot that went to his heart. And right then a door knocks on the door. Gal comes in like, oh, hi, doctor. 
Yeah, uh, we revived Jeff a fifth time, and he's like, any different? Is he able to maintain his own blood pressure? No, nope, same thing, not able to maintain his own blood pressure. And he's like, okay, thank you, Becky. And she backs out of the room, and you know, my mom and I come right back to the doctor with our eyes just filled with like, okay, so what's next? And he kind of like, well, you know, says, uh, kind of like, you heard it right there, or, uh, you know. And and I kid you not, like I had no no sense that we're at the end of my dad's life. And all of a sudden, the doctor, this head surgeon, big nice guy, he goes, hey, he go like he just had this spark of a good idea, like you were gonna. You know, like if I hadn't seen you in a long time, Tamara, we run into each other. I'm like, hey, we, we visit for a bit, but I'm like, hey, why don't we go get lunch? You know, I got this cute little place, breakfast, you know, and I give you the choice. And that's the energy in which he says, hey, do either of you want to go down and spend uh, the last 10 minutes with Jeff before he transitions off this earth? I mean, and he's looking at us and I'm just like, wait, what? You know, like, what are you talking about? Like, why are you smiling for me? And I, I thought, is this a trick question? Yes, yes, I want to go spend time with my dad. And my mom just politely says, you know what? I just kissed him goodbye 45 minutes ago when he didn't have a tube. He, you know, they told us he has a tube down his throat and everything else. And she goes, I prefer not to go see him like that. Rick, if you want to go down. And so I was just like the only one I felt almost selfish. My brother was uh, on the other side of the country, just getting in a five hour airplane to, you know, to tell him what was going on. He's like, I, I have to give up my phone. I felt selfish. Here I am the only one in our family getting to hold my dad, talk to him these last 10 minutes. It was absolutely magical. And, you know, after 10 minutes of saying all these things that I mentioned earlier, you know, what a great dad, father, husband, et cetera, talk about the boys' letters, talk about the locker room, talk about these guys literally saying, you know, I don't even know my dad. Or, you know, if I did, you know, other guys coming up to me saying, I haven't talked to my dad in six months, you know, and, and just these amazing stories and how I was blessing them with his with his life. Anyway, I'm hearing one by one all these eight different male and female nurses burst into tears afterwards. Anyway, long story short, they finally tapped me and tap 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 like Rick. You know those big lines and that noise that you've probably seen in movies uh, means that he's passed. And you know they're pulling me away from leave the tissue box that I've been using on his chest, and they're just laying their hands on me. And all this thing happened where I was still just you know. Uh, uncontrollably crying still and Andrew the head nurse which is the same name as my son he looks he, he's tapping on the back and he goes hey he says you know we don't typically cry in here and I thought he was talking to me and uh, I'm not a violent person at all but I, I literally just felt like you know reaching up and snapping his neck right off and like anyone else have anything to say about me crying <laughs> but thankfully I didn't say that yeah and 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 he, he kept talking, obviously, in the next sense, I figured out he was talking about them. And he says, you know, the yeah. first sentence connected was, Rick, we don't typically cry in here. And he says, we just can't share that kind of emotion day in, day out, hour by hour. We're in here 8, 10, 12 hours a day. We just can't do it. And I said, well, why now? I mean, obviously, you know, hearing all these people crying. He says, well, I, I think, and he was trying to find his words so carefully because I am such a big guy and I'm sitting here looking at him. My dad just passed away a second ago and he's like, well, and so my dad had dementia, like I said, and very common thing for people with dementia, which I did not know this, when they get into an environment outside of their normal day-to-day -day lives, they can go absolutely crazy. And my dad left the reservation. Uh, it was the hardest thing, much harder than even seeing my mother almost on death's door because my mom had her faculties the whole time. Uh, here's my dad swimming in a corner, you know, just, just doing loony bin stuff. And they were saying, oh, he's going to come back from this and stuff. And he did, right? And it was amazing that he did come back out of that. And the point was, this guy's sharing this little story. And he was, like, trying to be very delicate because my dad was, my dad doesn't even like hearing other people swear. And when I would bring my mom down in her wheelchair to his level on his floor during this week that he was in the hospital, you know, he was cussing like a sailor doing stuff. And she's over here just like, oh, my gosh, this isn't him. And they're like, Joey, you know, we understand. So the big punchline was, as he's trying to stumble through his words, he's like, your dad was kind of, I mean, this whole last week, it's been very difficult. And he, he and I, I answered with a, a very hilarious uh, little thing to lighten the mood. And everyone started laughing. And, you know, we just had this moment. Laugh, 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 big, long thing, clap. Rick, we love you so much. And they just walked me out the door. Please give your, your mom our best. And I left and I went the 15, 20 feet down to where my mom was. And here she is sitting in her wheelchair. She's faced away from the door. And I'm thinking about a million things right now. My dad just died. I'm just, I got a million things in my mind. 
And I open up the door and my mom turns around and she has the look of a five-year-old girl that was hoping for a red bicycle. And I just went, I was her little brother that just came from the downstairs and said, is the red bike there? Did Santa bring me the bicycle? That kind of energy. She turns to me and she's like, did, did, did Jeff make it? Is he alive? I heard everyone celebrating and cheering because of that little moment we had there together. And I just looked at him like, oh my gosh, I'm like, no, uh, dad has definitely passed. And then I, I had that opportunity to share those stories. And she calls it chemo brain that she, you know, so sharp, but here she is not remembering things. And she literally said she did not remember those stories. And because of this little misunderstanding, we had this moment of, is, did he make it? That was horrible, but it allowed for me to tell the story that happened at his passing. And she was so grateful to hear it again. And she acted like she'd never heard it before. She says, I'm sure you've told me that before, but for her, it's a brand new day when uh, she calls it chemo brain. And uh, so it was just these little funny things that happened that uh, allowed me to share that. So that's when my dad passed. Um, we had the memorial just the day before Thanksgiving. The whole family came in, you know, after the weekend, everyone's clearing out. And, you know, I've ran the largest accredited only investor group in the world, meaning by law, people had to have at least a million dollars net worth or more and they had to have that excluding their main residence, the value of their main residence. So my parents weren't qualified as accredited investors. Um, with his mastery of finance and everything else, he had at the last check, with, when I had the records, had over 600 plus thousand dollars. And by the time that he had passed, I calculated with the just continuation of what he had done, it should have been over $800,000 by then. And I just said to my mom, hey, now that dad has passed, I can legally manage your guys' money. Just give me the access codes and I can start taking over. And this is when she just looked at me. Nobody else is around. And she said, honey, your father was too embarrassed to tell you or your little brother that when he got dementia, felt like he might be slipping a little bit, didn't want to make a mistake, that he had turned over their finances to some financial guru and that he had somehow lost all their money. And I just sat here like, this has to be a joke. And my mom's like, we don't have anything. We've just been living off our social security checks. You know, they had very little um, monthly bills uh, at this point of their life with my brother and I doing stuff for them. But they still have bills. They still have things to do. And I was just dumbfounded. And I said, Mom, it's literally impossible to have lost all of dad's money, all, all of your, both of your money, um, because dad's strategies were long-term hold on major you know, the monolithic companies we're all aware of, and none of them have failed. We would have read about it in the news. And she says, well, I don't know anything about that. I just know that we don't have anything. And so I wanted names and numbers and give me this. And, and she just immediately said, you know, she wasn't giving us anything. And it wasn't so much for me. She was worried, I think, more about my older brother who uh, has this beautiful life, doctor, gorgeous, you know, wife, and two, that's redundant to say two twins, but boy and girl twins just graduated from Penn State, the same university my dad graduated from. And she was worried he was going to throw his life away and go, you know, go find this guy and take matters in his own hand, hopefully. So we just said, listen, we'll take care of mom. My brother and I have taken care of her. She's fighting cancer, you know, hated that her husband just died, but gave her the energy to focus on herself. And here she has this miraculous, you know, over multiple more surgeries, multiple more months in the, in the hospital off and on throughout those years, she became cancer free. And it was this beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, you know, my, my dad's, you know, praying to God, take me instead of her. And, you know, I don't know for sure if that's really what happened, but I believe that's what happened. And I, I believe God was like, okay. And random blood clot, cardiac arrest, dead in 45 minutes. I'm like, wow, that is a prayer answered, if anything else, than having my mom actually beat cancer, finished out the prayer in my mind. And at this point in life where she's cancer-free, Energizer Bunny, I said, she could live another 15, 20 years, hopefully, and that would cost another one to two million dollars or so. And so that's where I came up with this concept of I should just go buy her a cash flow one time that would sit here and pay for her needs on a month-to-month -month basis. And that's when this whole thing happened. I had you know, previously uh, found out about the internet marketing world uh, as I said, I, I ran one of the largest accredited investor groups in the world, almost 3,000 members, but we specialize in traditional assets. So these are the traditional stocks, bonds, you know, real estate, 
precious metals, diamonds, you know, these kind of things. Uh, now people are talking about cryptocurrencies being in the, in the class. It's not, but uh, they're considering that exchange money for some kind of asset and hope that it goes up in value. Well, those traditional assets cannot go up in value by hundreds of percent in a month. You know, you might be, get one out of 10 years that has an IPO and has this massive uprising. Those are so few and far between and harder to find than a white, you know, unicorn or whatever in the middle of nowhere. So that's not a structure. When I went to this mastermind, uh, I'm there for one reason and one reason only, to share with people what I, I do in my group so they would come and join my group. It didn't matter if it was a real estate mastermind, uh, a basket weaving mastermind. If they paid twenty-five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars to be in the mastermind, chances are that they were qualified to be in my investor group. So here I am at an investor internet marketing uh, mastermind with Yonic Silver. Everybody at this event had to have at least a ten million dollar business. Now these guys are all the best of the best. This is not your everyday average little internet marketers. They all have hundred plus million dollar businesses now. But here I was, it's the same old, same old. I go around and say what I do, how much we make for our clients. And then over the course of those first two days, one by one, they would all come to me and ask to you know, give me their card and talk next week. And they would all, all of them would join my group. Well, at the end of this first two days, I'd had this most amazing time, made all these great friends. I contributed so much to their businesses and things, but no one had come over and asked to be part of my group. And I thought somebody must have, you know, gotten jealous and spread some heinous rumor or something because this is ridiculous to go from 100% of people joining to 0%. And I went and literally cornered Yannick the, right before the dinner on the last night. And I said, hey, man, you know, what's going on? Something's going on. And he's like, what are you talking about? You know, everyone loves you. They thanked me for having you here. I didn't even have a website. So why was I there? You know, and he said, well, you know, Rick's been a bottom line consultant to billion dollar companies. I'm sure he can add lots of value to everybody else. So that's why I was invited to be there. And here, no one joined my group. So I told him what's going on. He said, Rick, you're absolutely amazing. You're the best in the world at what you do. He says, but the returns that you make for your customers, and he goes, in the traditional asset classes, which no one had ever made that, that clarification or, you know, qualification in before, he said, it actually pales in comparison to what we make on our investments. And I was like, pales in comparison? Really? You know, and I, I just couldn't even imagine what he's possibly talking about because I have my fingers in every single one of these traditional asset classes. And he said, listen, he says, we, we invest in something called traffic. And I was so new to internet marketing, I did not know what traffic was. For those of you out there that might be in the same place that I was before, traffic is literally paying money to Facebook or to Google or somewhere to buy a lead that's coming to your website. It literally is just buying an eyeball of a qualified person, someone that you have described and perfected. If I was looking for 45 to 60 year old men who are retired or, you know, I mean, I could be so specific and even by zip code or area code and then send those people only to a sales page, an opt-in page and a sales funnel. But anyway, I didn't know any of that. I looked at him like he was crazy. He then said, Rick, listen, we're not happy unless we make, and again, this is the best internet marketers in the world, so this is going to sound outrageous, and it is, but this is what he said. We're not happy unless we're making 10, 20, 30, and I thought he was going to say percent, at which time I would jump in with the amazing percentage of returns that we made, which dwarfed that, but before I said a word, he said 10, 20, 30 X per campaign. X. 30 times, 10 to 20, 30 times. I was like, and the only campaigns I knew about were political campaigns. So I thought maybe a four or six year house or Senate seat. I mean, they're, they're campaigning during the whole time. I was like, I can't make those kind of returns in four to six years. And he says, years, question mark, question mark, you know? And he says, listen, he pulls open his laptop and it's a live, it's a live feed. These are numbers that are changing as we're watching it. There's three, major column, uh, three major um, rows going across and it's showing a dollar number in the beginning and then it was showing all these different little columns across and different dollar numbers and it had dates on here and I'm trying to figure it out and, he's, and at the very end there was this double sized bold number with the percent sign it said 1726 percent that's 17 times and I said what's that and he said oh that's yeah 
mind blown, right? But I hadn't, I, compared to what? I don't know the time frame, so I'm not in a mind blown moment yet. I just said, what's that number? And he said, that's the net ROI, the net return on our investment based on this, this sales funnel. And I said, 17 times. I said, over how many years? Because that's a realistic question. How many years? It would take me yeah. Yeah. years and years and years. I mean, to do a 10x return would be 20 years. I mean, just it's crazy. And he was like, years? You know, question mark. And he points over to the first column, which shows the dates of this campaign. And he says, Rick, there's the dates of the campaign right there. And it was just weeks. And I, this is when I had my mind-blowing moment. I didn't believe you, anything. Didn't right, believe so anything. I look at the next one, and this one was 2,600 something percent. The third one was 3,400 something percent. These were all different ad campaigns and money that they were driving, and this was the net ROI. And I literally just said, oh my gosh, I finally got it. I'm not going to bore you with the education part, but I finally understood it. And I literally was like, this is why I'm running hedge funds, and we have access to all this money. I'm like, you just give me the wire instructions. I can have $10 million to you by Friday. He was like, Rick, uh, this wasn't a sales presentation. I, I don't need your money. I, I, I simply was answering the question of why they didn't join your group. I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I, I apologized. I thought I must have offended him by saying, implying he needed my money. I said, no, no, no. I said, oh, my gosh, uh, you, know, just, you don't have to give me the huge percentages. Just give me a couple hundred percent a year, and I'll be the new cover boy in Forbes magazine. You know, the, the biggest hedge fund last year, Tamara, made 53% for the year, right? So if I made 200%, I mean, I would be the golden boy of all golden boys. So he wouldn't take my money. I went to all these different guys, the, you know, Perry Belcher, Mike Dillard, Ryan Lee, Tim Schmidt, you know, all these amazing, internet, Jim Mercola, right? All these different amazing internet markers that were there. None of them would take my money. They loved what they were doing, but they're like, we literally print money, Rick. So that was where the impetus happened. I came back into this now that my, Dad's dead. My mother's now survived cancer, and we're going to be taking care of her because they lost everything for the rest of her life. And I just thought, we don't need to do that. Let me go talk to somebody, find somebody that I can go buy a cash flow. And that's how this whole thing started was buying a cash flow that somebody else is doing. It's already operating. It's already successful. They've already tested everything. And I finally found somebody who is making multiple seven figures a year with an already proven model, an already proven sales funnel, already proven products, and the most important thing, the marketing, the system, already proven. And so when I offered to give them this huge lump sum of money to buy the rights to all the products to their site, copy it exactly as it is, and all the marketing, not just the marketing they're using now so successfully, but I bought the rights to all the future marketing. Because you and I both don't know, they don't know what's going to be working a year, two years, three years from now. It might not have even been developed yet. But what I bought was the rights to that marketing. So they're going to be testing it for their own pocketbook to make sure they're still making money, to make sure their products are still relevant. I just sit back and let them do all, spend all the money on the testing. And when they found something that works again, makes more money than what they're making now, I get the rights to that as well. So when you said you don't understand what we do, it literally is as simple as this. Picture the avatar as my mother fighting colorectal cancer, not able to take phone calls, not able to do emails. So when you think of what do I have to do, the answer is nothing. It's just like if you bought an oil well that's producing cash flow. You don't have to go out there pumping oil or bottling oil or even selling oil. You just buy the cash flow. And so what I offer people is the opportunity to buy a cash flow. So they come into my store, there's not really a store, but when they come into my virtual store in my mind, they're literally seeing you know, 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month, 20,000 a month, 30,000 a month, all the way up to 100,000 and 250,000 a month because some people have big, huge dreams and goals. They wanna go help the world, build water wells, build schools, and they said, I need $250,000 a month to make these things happen. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to support, and that means that any Cash flow number, any number that they're thinking of, whether it's the beginning of their financial freedom, because I'm thinking of the masses out there, it could be $5,000 a month. And they're like, yeah, $5,250 a month. Multiply that number by four, that's $21,000. I could literally go buy them that business for $21,000. They're going to have to spend 
no matter if it's a $21,000 business all the way up to a million dollar business, there's a thousand dollar, you know, admin fees. It's less than a thousand, but just the startup cost because it's, it's flat for any size business. And then I recommend somebody spending at least $3,000 towards the marketing. They should spend four or five, 10, whatever they can, but they spend that one time to get the, the pump primed. And now they're never spending it again, even though they're spending it on marketing each month, it's coming out of the profits of the business. And so okay. imagine sitting here doing whatever you're doing. I, I was just at a mastermind yesterday or Thursday filled with amazing people tr paying lots of money to get taught how to go become a brand, be, be, you know, be a coach, uh, be a lead masterminds, all these amazing skill sets to go create and give, you know, find something of value to offer the world, uh, create this brand, create this following, do these courses, sell these to people to make this money. And it's fantastic. The system works, right? These people that are offering it are amazing. I found out by asking people deep questions. So why is it you want to do that? Oh, because of this. And why do you want to do that? Oh, so I can take care of my family. And why do you want to? I just kept going deeper, deeper, deeper. And by the time I got done with my discussions, I found out that if given the opportunity, whether they're an architect, they're a plumber, they're an electrician, a doctor, a lawyer, if given the opportunity to make their dream number, whatever that is, I don't care if it's 10,000 a month, 25,000, 50,000, whatever their number is, they said if they were given an opportunity to just be given that number every month, would they keep doing what they're doing? Some people said yes. Some people said yes. I might cut back my hours dramatically. I might pick my dream clients to work with, 10 of them instead of 100 of them. I might do this. I might do that. But every single person said, you know what I would really do if I had that money coming in? And they had, and that's when I finally heard their real passion. Uh, they wanted to go support this group or go travel. I'm not here to judge anybody's answer. You don't have to impress me with, oh, I'm going to go save the world. I honestly, I think that's amazing, but I honestly think it's okay for you if somebody's like, you know, I've worked my butt off. I just want to retire. There's no judgment with that, right? I just want to go on a mission with my church. No judgment with that. If someone's fighting cancer, it's like, I just want to focus on fighting cancer, not do anything. No judgment. My gosh, this would be a dream for you, right? right. My friend that just has the this amazing near death, he almost died on the operating table. I didn't mention that. But they found out he had a, uh, he'd never had surgery before, and he's got an excessive bleeding disorder. They literally didn't put the spacers in between his plates and pins because they're like, you know, we, this, this will be enough. We'd love to put spacers in here. But if we go that far, he will bleed out and die before we're finished with the surgery. And they, they chose, like, we're going to be fine without the spacers, and he's going to live. And he did live. And they told him that story afterwards, like, you've got an excessive bleeding disorder. You almost bled out on the table. My point is, we never know where we're going today. If somebody is sitting here at a super young age, they haven't figured out their life yet, no judgment for me. I traveled the world when I was in my 20s. I traveled the world when I was 16, right? As a, as a student ambassador to seven countries in Europe. I got trained at the George Washington University to learn all these different ways to speak with translators, to learn the backgrounds of these different countries before I was that student ambassador under the Reagan administration. I saw all these countries, saw the world, it, it reformed what I wanted to do in life as an international business person and marketer. But my gosh, if you want to go travel and see the world and develop your personality, by all means, I can show anybody how to buy that cash flow. And so that's the big message here is that someone says, that sounds great, Rick. I don't have the money. I don't have the credit. Because we have sources that know our business model that say yes to more people than they would typically for something else because they know what business they're buying. So even if you thought, you know what, I couldn't qualify for this or I couldn't qualify for that, it doesn't hurt your credit to try to go through our sources, to try to get funding that pays for your marketing, pays for your business, pays for everything, and you're instantly financially free using other people's money and you're paying it back for the profits of the store. You don't have to have anything, right? If somebody has their own money in retirement or in their savings, they can turn around and and buy their store, and then they're going to get 75% of the profits by doing that. If they go through one of my sources, and not just 75% of the profits, I'm saying 75% of the gross total is yours, and you take out, you subtract out what you spend on marketing, right? Because you still have to pay for marketing no matter who you get the financing from, but that comes from the business and out of the sales. Well, if somebody's sitting here in your audience and saying, like my friend, right, hasn't worked because of the surgery, 
I don't have all the resources I've had. I've had to take care of this and that. I've been out of work for months or whatever their story is. Imagine if you going out to apply for these places, if you knew in the back of your head you had a backup plan because we have a financing company that will finance anybody regardless of their credit, regardless if they live in the country, regardless if they speak English, they will loan them the money to buy the store 100% if they need it. So, so, so let me let me kind of wrap this up because I know that 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 you've given us a lot of information. You went through the whole miracle story, which I appreciate that because, in truth, you know it really has made me think so much. And and then when you um, you laid out why it is that you were looking at options because of your mother and her situation and you know here she she told you some difficult news she thought however in your typical rick style you're like okay let's fix this or let's figure this <laughs> out we'll make this we'll make it okay don't worry and and then you start going out there and with your experience in business and traveling the world being aware of the traditional assets traditional finance traditional ways of saving and growing your your funds your business your 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 money your assets all of a sudden you see there's a whole new world out there and <laughs> you decide to take it on learn it and in again your typical style learn how to do it and so that it will be a win because it seems like anything that you do you do big and you uh you you've got the energy you've got that like you said that energizing bunny type of energy you you and you have the intelligence and you have the understanding so in conclusion because we're we've got a little over time but i know that people are like loving this you've got people saying you know like amy's loves it Kimberly's been going really wow, you know, on and on. This is so awesome. And and Mikey, he just, you know, you met Mikey at the event. He he's like, you know, he's amazing. And so when I put this up, buycashflows.com, you have it set up like you were sharing that you've got the system set, you've got people ready, you've got stores that can be bought you understand the mechanics of it and you can prove that there's a success rate that really don't worry about your current situation because we can turn that around and turn it upside yeah. down if you will and so that you can you can achieve what it is that you your personal goals will achieve and yes of course it's mathematic you want to uh, achieve so much per month then you know times it by four, correct? That is a rough kind of idea of how much the buy-in will be for the business. And then additionally, you have administrative costs, and then you need to take into consideration the marketing aspect of it. And that's yeah. pretty much what what you're looking at, correct? Right. And so so what I'm what I'm when when people come to buycashflows.com, they're 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 choosing. Uh, literally uh, cash all the way up to $250,000 a month and they're paying a million dollars for that, right? That, that's not most of the people in the audience. Most people are saying if I had $10,000 a month, so they would multiply that by four and they would pay $40,000 a month. The thing that we're doing special, when I said I, when I came on here, I said we're doing something special for you, you know, that giving them that access. They can go to that site. They can still read about that. They can book an appointment with me on that site and share that time with me, right? I'm happy to walk them all through that. What I'm offering to those people that were on this live broadcast, people that are in that place, they can literally go and just buy at cost, uh, meaning come through that site, have an appointment. They go to the site where you can see an example of the business that we give you, and they can literally come in regardless of where they want to have their finance should be. The most that they would be paying with one of your listeners right now is that maximum of $21,000. And so they would pay the admin fee on top of that, which is less than another thousand. So a total of 22 and they'd have to spend at least 3000 to go towards marketing. But what I'm saying is if they don't get qualified by the sources, we would give them to get funding. If they don't have their own money, it's the best to use their own money. Obviously you don't pay interest on any financing, but for those of you that don't have the financing, if you at least apply 
through one of our sources because they notify us when you apply during that first you know 48 hours of us having that appointment you can lock yourselves into getting that 75 percent that's only for the first the first 48 hours when you watch the the videos and stuff like that it, it locks you in and says if you can pay this within 48 hours you get the 20 the, the 75 percent of the profit of the store otherwise you're doing a 50 50 split where 90 percent of the people plus are at a 50 50 split it's just like uh, you have a lot of experience in the speaking industry, right? When a speaker goes to another event, it's not their own event. That means somebody else has spent the money to market and get those butts in the seats, the audience that they would present to. And they go offer their package, whether it's a $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 package. Whatever they sell on that stage, they're having to turn around as a marketing cost after the fact, and they give 50% to the promoter that put on the event. It's the same thing in our in our world, except there's no speaking event. We're sitting here spending the money, our money on the marketing of their proven marketing materials. We're sharing their brand with the world to a targeted list and they control all the marketing. They know who they've already marketed to. So we're not diluting our marketing dollars by marketing to the same people they've marketed to. So we let them control the marketing. We just send the, the money to them and you could put it on a credit card. So as they're doing the marketing, driving traffic to our site now, which is an identical copy to their site, to the same list with the same marketing pieces, we are gonna get the same results. Because at the end of watching the videos, at the end of watching the frequently asked questions videos and all the testimonial videos, the call to action is for them to call and talk to a success coach, right? It's the same exact success coach that they would have at their line. So it's gonna have the same results. And that's why this duplication process of why Anybody can do this, whether they're young, middle-aged, old, fat, skinny, white, black, Asian, or from a different country. The point is it's because they don't have to do anything besides buy the store, pay the admin fee, and then pay for marketing one time, that at least 3000 It could be a lot more than if you want, but that's going to prime the pump of getting those sales generated where now the marketing is paid for out of the profits of the store, and you just nice. sit back and collect money. That's the business that we do. So okay. it's so simple. If you understand, it's literally push button, instant financial freedom. Right. I'm going to talk right. about the worst case scenario for you. Right. You don't okay. have the money yourself. Um, you don't have you don't get qualified through the sources we do. It doesn't hurt your credit to apply. They'll walk you through this and stuff, but they'll help you. But if they can't help you for whatever reason. Right. Know that we have a financing company that will give you 100 percent of the financing for buying the store. They'll show you how to raise the money for the rest of the, the, the three, I mean, the four to five thousand dollars you need for admin and some marketing money. But that can all be put on a credit card. Right. Most people have the ability to have something like that on a credit card, even though we loaned them the full twenty one thousand dollars to buy the store. In that situation, whatever you were supposed to get in the first place, which is half. So when a twenty one thousand dollars sale is made in your store and you would naturally earn ten thousand five hundred dollars for that, you're going to take half of that and pay back towards the loan and the interest, right? Half of it, this is, means other people's money allowed you to just make $5,250. Now, you're gonna want to put a, a large portion of that back towards marketing to really get this thing cruising up to a level that you'd really be happy with, a 15, 20, $30,000 plus month income business coming in. That's gonna come from reinvesting your marketing for a period of time until you're up to this higher level. But that's exactly what we can wave a magic wand and do for you. Whereas who else is going to give you money without credit, without a history, even if you're in a foreign country? The answer is nobody. And that's the right. miracle of what, what right. we do. Um, right now, you might have something great going on. Somebody looks at this as an investment, says, I've got all the money I need, and says, but we still have to put their money towards investing. There's nothing in the traditional asset class that somebody can do where they can turn around and make these type of returns based on internet marketing returns versus the, the traditional asset classes of real estate going up in value, uh, stocks going up in value, hopefully, you know, currency trading, gold, whatever they're investing in, nothing can have the type of return that internet marketing can because it's tested. They test it for two and a half years already. And we're just doing what's already working to the same kind of targeted list with the same exact ad, with the same exact landing page, with the same exact website, we're gonna get the same exact results if you do it enough. It's gonna be identical. So that's the final thing I'll say is that anyone can qualify, anyone can go forward. Um, if they wanna to go to givescash.com,
they can actually go to the site and see the business that we're letting them buy a copy of to see the mechanism, to see the, the process of it. What's the name of it again? Give what? Uh, Givescash.com. We'll take you to that site, uh, let you log in, let you go see the testimony videos, let you see the frequently asked questions videos, and just know that the number at the top there, it's an 818 number at the end, even though it's a different voice and a different everything, my, I'm not pictured anywhere, that is my site. You will okay. get a call back from me personally when you leave a number in that 818 number. And we can help you with the financing, help you with anything you need help with, answer any questions, but that's how you go do it, is go to givescash.com, watch through the videos, and get comfortable, get a drink, because the testimonial video is on there, the frequently asked questions videos are on there, as well as obviously the main presentation video, which is shorter than even a half hour sitcom. So it does not take a lot of time to go through it, but it literally is information that can change your life if you allow it to come in and say, you know what? I would like to have money coming in where someone else does all the work and I could go pursue my true passion. I don't care if you're a musician, an artist. You know, I live in LA now where there's actors and people, writers. You can go pursue anything knowing that you've got this money coming in. And if you're fighting cancer or fighting some other disease or fighting a back surgery, my friend is sitting here going, uh, yeah, my, my case, I'm not going to get the money for my case for could be a year or more because they've got to wait for all these surgeries. They've got to wait that there's nothing else left before they go do a settlement offer on this huge case with him. We have a question that I want to ask. Perfect timing. Um, is that we have a couple people that are very interested that are already saying they're going to go check it out today sure. and they want to know, do we, how do we let you know that they're on this live today so they can take advantage of your offer? What do you so, want? They, they don't have to do anything. My point is all that information comes just to me. So when you, the final action on there after you watch everything is to call and leave a voicemail and that's it's somebody else's voice in the voicemail. It's not mine. It's a professional voicemail guy. I mean, you know, voice actor guy. But my point is those messages come to me and you simply say, Hey, this is Amy. Hey, this is Mike. Hey, I was on the call with Tamara. Oh my gosh. And boom, you're literally telling me in that moment that that's where it's coming from. So. Okay. okay perfect. Okay. So we've got, um, buy cash flows.com and givescash.com. We've got yeah, these two, uh, two different yeah. things completely. The buycashflows.com is if you're wanting to book an appointment with me, it kind of talks about the industry, my background, and things like that. It just kind of gives a broad base about myself. Gives cash, you're not going to see anything about me, but know that this is the business that's providing all this amazing financial freedom to somebody. And that's where you can go actually see in action what's what's doing so well. It's not we don't keep anything private. There's nothing, we're, not, we're transparent about everything. So these products that are being sold in the store that people buy, this is all up-to-date information on what's happening now, how to grow the bottom line of any business, whether you are a retail, traditional brick and mortar business, whether you're a, a lawyer, doctor, whether you're a journeyman electrician or a plumber, whether you're a coach, right? It doesn't matter what type of business you have, these products, it's like a four levels, one, two, three, four, just like a college education, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. It's an ascending order of products, all teaching you how to grow the bottom line of one of these businesses. And so people buy these products because they're timely. They can write them off. And then we call that person back and say, hey, George, you just got all these, you bought all four levels of the products. They could just buy one level, two levels, three levels. There's all sorts of different things, ways they can do it. That's all a write-off because it's continuing education to grow their business so they can write that off. But then we say, hey, would you like to spend a few extra dollars on marketing because we can go market this on your behalf now that you own the rights to all the products and we can go sell these for you. You don't have to talk to a customer. You don't have to do any marketing. Just pay for the marketing and we'll do everything for you. And depending on how fast they paid, George, you can make 50 to 75% of all the products sold in your own personal store and they're like, uh, yes, please, right? <laughs> and and that's, that's how this thing proliferates and where it's just we can offer this around the world because businesses around the world can use the same information. And we've right. got AI software that can send that message out in 27 languages around the world. They can respond back to me on Google Translate, ask their questions. I can answer them. They can send a wire for the business and – because we collect all the money first and pay them their 50 or 75%, that's the only reason why I can loan to anyone in the world 
because I don't have to worry about them paying me back because I get the money first and then I pay them. So hope that well, answers you know, your question. It does. It, and, and thank you for, I mean, we've gone a little long today, but we had a lot of engagement, a lot of people that are very interested in what you're sharing. And I'm glad that we were able to share your heart before we went into what it is that you're doing, because what it, it, it shows is we need to understand why is it that someone would be willing to put together a program that, if you will, just about anybody in the world would be able to be self-sufficient. You don't always see that. However, in understanding who you are, Rick, it helps to understand why and to understand why it makes total sense because of the fact that you were brought up in an environment where you did have those letters that you shared with the other boys that your dad shared. And yes, they were nuts and bolts sometimes because your dad was an engineer and he was possibly sharing things that were kind of practical skills or, or yeah. information. And yet that was an act of love that he was doing by doing it every week and making that commitment and keeping that commitment. And then as you shared all the other things that took place, yes, your dad may have been having a little bit of dementia during the time that your mother was being faced with stage four colon rectal cancer. However, his the thing I understand about dementia, having had it in my own world and, and experiencing it in different ways is that there's still an element of that person in there. There is oh, that he, person. He, and I, I promise you, he was very, he knew exactly what he was doing. There were some issues, wasn't allowed to drive anymore, some definite issues there. But for the most part, you're sitting here in an environment where you weren't with some elusive guy that didn't know what he was doing or talking right. about. So when he was making this request, making this prayer to take him, that right. was 100%. He knew, he knew. He knew exactly he what he was saying, what he was doing. Yeah. And he believed. And in that belief, I, as someone that, I'm inspired by this story. The way I like to look at it is that his his prayer, his plea was answered. And the evidence of that answer is now your mother is here with you. The Energizer Bunny is out there doing her thing. And you are able to have that relationship with her. And because of what she shared, once all of this, the dust settled, you stepped into action and what are you you're a numbers guy you're a finance guy you're an international business guy you come from traditional yet you also know enough to say okay what's the new deal in town yeah. what, and you're I'm doing humble enough what? To, to say you you're, you're doing something better than me and it wasn't just a little bit better it was literally this so monumental bigger it was incredible so right and, and, and i know we've gone long And hopefully he'll be back. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll see because I'm sure he was just about to to uh, end with some kind of a statement. So um, I know that many of you have been as inspired with with the stories that you've heard today as I have been. Um, the the fact that Rick was willing to come on. I, I have this image and the reason I have it, I just want to share is that I thought about this healing through connections. What would you do for just one more day? And his father actually did something healing for just one more day. And he actually, his prayer was answered and for, in behalf of his beloved wife. And I, I grabbed this as I was just, looking at different pictures to, to pull. And it made me think in terms of this, is that we are an international global family. The world is so small now, and we are touching people throughout the world through the internet. And the fact that Rick, a man that's helped people with portfolios of billions of dollars, is here helping each one of us and understands what it's like to face your greatest fears, the thought face of someone that you love, dealing with loss and dealing with loss of life and loss of 
finances that you thought would be there. there. And yet, in that smile and that energy, you all saw this is a man that figured out a way to make something happen. And he ended up making a difference. And he is making a difference through the program that he's got going on with givescash.com. So I, I am going to end because I have gone way over my normal time, but I believe it was worth it. I hope you do too. Get a hold of, of Rick, leave a message. And if you watch this in live, hashtag live, if you're still here right now, please uh, hashtag live. And if you watch it in replay, hit hashtag replay because I am sure he will honor what it is that he is saying that he'll do for you on replay too. So why don't you check into this? I, I, um, in total disclosure, I do not have any kind of an affiliate agreement with Rick. I brought him on as a service hero because I believe that his story is one of inspiration that my buddies, my chemo buddies for life, can get something from. And so that's why I brought him on. I don't want you to be thinking that, yes, I'm going to be getting anything. If anybody wants to donate, hey, I'm all for it. Go ahead and donate to Chemo Buddies for Life. That works. Um, if you guys see the, the, the value that this was, and if you want to in some way give back, I would love it. Am I requesting it? No. Do I expect it? No. I'm just bringing it up because you know it. You never know unless you say, but here we've got our guest back. And so thank goodness. I, I, I kept it going for a few minutes because I thought you may come back. And so you were just sharing with us at the very end. Why don't you share your thoughts? I, I just want to share a quick story from the standpoint of the miracle, right? And you talked about, are you going to publish your dad's stories? I might. We're, we're, we don't know if that's a for sure thing, but something I want to share that's not going to be meant to make money from but to share a concept that um, I put myself in a situation mentally, made it real, because I knew there was somebody out there who was going to be in a situation of not having the money to buy. There was no, I didn't have access to any finance companies that I could send somebody to or send myself to. I did not have a company that would give guaranteed financing regardless of credit. So I saw this opportunity. I had the ability to do it. And I said, somebody out there is going to be not having the money, not having the resources, and I, 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 they're, they're going to say, well, you were, it was easy for you. You just did it this way. I created a situation, Tamara, of, of, that I don't have any money. I have my cell phone. I've got my laptop. I have my social media friends, and I have that humility of saying this is something I desperately want to do, and I wanted to do that $21,000 within 48 hours. I set a real-time situation and scenario, and I went out to ask for the money. This was something I believed in. I talked about the return on investment of it, that once I own the store and if I did it within this 48 hours, I could get 75% of all the total sales. So if someone bought 14,000, I made $10,500. If they bought a 7,000 package, I would make 5,000 something dollars. If they made 3,000, I'd make 2,200 something. The point was when they made $21,000 purchase, I was gonna make $15,750. Now for my background on a return on investment of me spending $21,000, I wasn't adding in uh, the $1,000 admin, you know, the, those costs or anything. I was just thinking right. about that $21,000 at the time. Right. But I said, I'm going to need money for marketing. I'm going to need money for, this, uh, for the admin fee. So I was asking for that $25,000 number. I gave myself 48 hours. It's the real life situation because I said, somebody out there is going to want to have that. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting here confident. I'm putting out feelers. I'm asking people, hey, would you loan me this? And just creating that same kind of thing that somebody else would have to do if they didn't have it. Right. So in the middle of all that, this was on, um, uh, I, I got a phone call that night that just totally derailed what I was doing. I was supposed to be moving to Hawaii. Uh, literally got a call January 1st at 9.30 at night saying, oh, there's been an accident, family emergency. We're not going to be there to give you this house. We're going to have to stay here for a month. And so I, I wasn't doing the process for literally a day and a half trying to solve this other problem. And I sat here telling my mom, who's my right strongest supporter, this is in person. I'm not on the phone. I mean, I'm literally with her. And I'm usually the guy that, you know, I'll, I'll be confident all the way till the buzzer rings that I think I can get it done. 
And I sat here after solving the, not solving the problem about the housing and everything else. I hung up the phone. It's 2 o'clock. Money has to be wired or sent before the end of today or else I don't qualify for this. And I just said, I just kind of put my hands up and I said, Mom, I, I can't do this. I, I, I don't think I can do this. And she's like, without even hesitating, she goes, oh, you, you absolutely can't do this. And I was just like, what? you know, what's that supposed to be? Like, you're supposed to come in with, oh, come on, don't give up. You got plenty of, if you got a few hours left, you can still make this happen. But that's not what she said. She goes, nope, you can't do this. And I just, I was, I have this kidney bean shaped uh, little lap board that I have my laptop on. I'm in a recliner chair with my laptop open. Legs are up on a pillow. And I'm just dumbfounded that she is telling me this. But she just, without hesitation, she grabs something off the counter, which I'd never seen before. And she slaps this can on my on my lap board and she goes, but she goes, you can't do this. And then she goes, she slaps this thing down. She goes, but God can. And it literally on this little orange, it's like a, the size of an orange juice concentrate can. It's been wrapped in, you know, construction paper, but it literally says on the thing, God can. And I'm like looking at her like, and she's got this smile on my face. And, and she says, no, seriously, this is real. And I go, mom, what, what is this? I said, this is a real time problem. I need to have money. And I had $10,000 left that I needed to have come in in this short period of time. She dumps out the cards and, I mean, the she dumps out the can and there's a bunch of these six or seven or eight of these little rolled up pieces of paper, like as if you were trying to write a little note to somebody and threw it over in the trash. I was like, what is this? And she goes, open open one, open any of them. I said, mom, I, I'm so, she goes, Rick, open it. And I open it, I just grabbed one randomly, there was eight of them or so. I unre- un- 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 unravel it and this was the note where she said, Dear God, they just literally told my son to come here, said I wasn't going to make it. Um, I'm putting this in your hands. If you want me here, you're going to have to do a miracle. Uh, you know, just this is where she was writing when she couldn't even speak. And with a face, she goes, I asked this prayer in Jesus' name. And she rolled it up and puts it into the God can because God can. And I'm like, I'm just looking at her like, Mom. I mean, and she goes, I, I said, I have an amazing relationship with God. I just talked to God. I don't need to write, uh, you know, anything down like this. And she just says, Honey. Write it out, say it in prayer, say it in thought, put it in the God can. It's magical and da da da. Oh, it's like, Mom, I don't want to do this right now. I'm so busy. But I went ahead and wrote out, <laughs> Dear Lord, I need ten thousand more dollars in you know, literally the next three hours, and it has to be here. It has, I have to send a. I know there's other you know other people with bigger needs, bigger this. I said, but I truly believe. That there is no capacity. My my little prayer isn't isn't worse or greater than that other person's prayer. Yes, theirs is obviously more important. Asking for them to save their life. I'm asking for money because I want to be able to go help all these people and give them the inspiration of the story. And I put it in the God can. And I was literally jumping in the shower. I was rushing off to go. There was a, there was a man that was literally at the table, so excited about this. And I'm not kidding. All of a sudden, it was like, oh, this is amazing. He was watching the 26 minute video. He was just going to loan me the money as I had requested. And then he, after seeing all this and seeing what I was doing, he's like, well, can I do this? This guy was a missionary for 50 plus years of his life with his wife. His wife recently died just two years ago. He's just now getting over that. He's sitting here, you know, leading Sunday school at the church. This is not a guy faking a heart attack to get out of something. He's literally like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. You know? and, and so the, the point was, this was one of the people that was supposed to give the money and then all of a sudden we rushing him off to the hospital and I was going to go shower shave and then go over to his place to see if he is back from the hospital I he's not answering the phone that's what I was going to go do I'm walking out the door my mom stops me and she says honey and she gave a name of a person that I don't want to mention on here but uh, one of my favorite people in the world she was my original Herbalife sponsor from 30 years ago definitely has the money she's on the west coast she was in, in, in Phoenix at this time and I you have no idea how terrible I, I, I did not want to call her. But my mom says, honey, call, call this person. They, they have it. They would give it to you. I said, I, I do not want to ask her. I, you know. and, and she says, you said you would, you would be in action. You're not just going to pray for God to do something without, you know, God can put the yes in someone's heart, but you've got to be out in action. You've got to be asking. Do it. You don't just wait for a pile of money to fall through the roof. I said, you're right. You're right. And I went back to my chair. I literally, you know, didn't have the lap board on me. I sat in the recliner chair. I pulled open my phone. I pulled her name up in the contacts. I was definitely going to push it, but I said, let me just take a second. 
I said, dear Heavenly Father, you know my heart. You know that I will push this button. I said, but I'm begging you, please, right? Don't make me push the button. I, I forgot one part of the story is that I put a, fo- a post on Facebook before getting the shower, after I did the God can, and I put it in the context of a real estate deal. Like, you know, if you just need $10,000 more to seal the deal to get you over that hump, and I'd be willing to pay this 25% interest you know, within two months because I was going to be able to save 50%. Something like that, short, people would understand it. I didn't explain the business that I was doing, but I'd done that, you know, before I got in the shower. So here I am praying to God not to have to call this person. I said the prayer. I said, you know, prayer's going to happen instantly, but I thought I'll still give him just a few seconds to, you know, <laughs> see if something happened. And I, I was like, this is so silly. I'm just going to call her as I, as I know I need to do. And I went to go push the button and my phone rang and Dan Carroll, a longtime friend, from the East Coast calls, Rick, you know, I don't even know why he's calling, but I'm like, Dan, you know, and he says, I saw your post on Facebook, my friend, what do you need? You know, he's got this really great accent, and he's just like, what do you need, my friend, anything you need, you know, and he was willing to loan me the money at this final hour and do this, do that, and my mom just sat there, she wasn't surprised at all, she's over here like, I told you, God can, and that, so I definitely want to go market this God can, not sell them, but just tell people about it so they can go make their own God can, um, but I just want to share that story with you that I literally did put myself in the position of somebody out there listening right now who might be saying, this is great for that person, that person, they've got money, they've got this. I'm telling you that even without the God can, we have a source now that will be the God can for you to give you that funding if you need it and and literally give you 100% funding regardless of your past, regardless of your credit, all that kind of stuff. But we also have the sources that can hopefully still get you the 75% uh, if you go through one of those sources or if you have the money yourself. So with that, thank you so much for right. listening to the last little 10 second story about the God can. <laughs> you know, you've got people that love, love, love the God can. They, you know, um, and in fact, Kimberly's like, I am making one now. <laughs> well, she, she, had, she had all sorts of things in there. Those other rolled a piece of paper were all amazing things. She says, I didn't take things out that just, you know, it didn't come true. These are all, the only ones I put in there. She goes, you can open every single one of them. Every single one of them came true. And so she's like, I'm telling you, God can, you know, and anyway, very funny. I, I Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for You're sharing welcome. everything that you've shared oh, with us today. Oh, my pleasure. You have given us such, I know that you've given me, and I'm speaking for many of my friends because they've been saying it. You've given us so much encouragement so much inspiration and so many actionable tools and and abilities for us to be able to go forward in our own particular lives to be able to to do whatever it is that those 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 desires are like you said you don't discriminate on any of those whatever it is is whatever they are looking to do and she says so sweet i love it that's kimberly you know yeah. and so we've got a uh, www GivesCash.com up here. So as we close, I know you've shared it with us so many amazing nuggets and stories and ideas and and you guys, can you just say thank you? I I know that I <laughs> thank you guys. Uh, you know because you you've definitely given us so much value for our time together today and i appreciate it very much rick and the least i can do is make you um a service hero and yes what a great tangible visual for children too along with us adults absolutely i agree amy absolutely (laughs) so you've you've inspired so many and many of the people that are involved with today are are influencers that have other you know uh shows and and communities and and networks and so you guys please share this out with your people because i know that there's so many people that are in a situation right now one actually made a comment that this was an answer to their prayer today you were an answer to their prayer and that right there i am sure you hear so much however i know with your giving heart rick that it still is as um touching i bet for you to hear it today as it is for you to have heard it yesterday and so it it means it means the world to me and and my you know i was i was living in paradise living in hawaii i also have a home in thailand i love warm water and crystal clear everything 
And I had the opportunity in March uh, through one of the clients that bought a cash flow for his parents and things like that. He's a coach. He, he insisted that I come and help his tribe by going to an event in Miami. And I, you know, it's a 12 hour, just one way flight to get to Miami from where I was living in Hawaii. And he eventually convinced me to come in there, said how much this could affect so many coaches that are out doing great things. So I committed to going. Then he told me I had to go to another event. He didn't know when it was, but told me the name of it. Well, that one was also in March. It was starting the next day in LA. I was already up since the whole night. It was 4 a.m. in the morning. I, and the event's now the next day. I said, you know, let me just get the ticket and I'll sleep on either on the plane or at, you know, the, the night before the event and I'll just go and just be of service. And I was gone eventually for 25 days on the road to that first event. And then I went to Miami, went to that event. Then I went to Dallas for CEO space, something I'd been a part of for four years. I mean, for since 2010, so nine plus years, but I uh, hadn't been in four years since they moved out of Lake Las Vegas. So I literally was gone for 25 days. I was connecting with human beings in person. All of this business is done through cold targeted traffic online. You don't talk to anybody, you don't do anything. Nobody knows you're doing the business. But here I was talking to people in person, hearing the connection, getting the hugs, and it just uplifted my life in such a way. I went to my mom for her 25th, I mean, uh, April 25th is her, was her 76th birthday. And I'm talking to her, talking about this amazing time I had in March and how these people and hugging and trying and just giving hope. And I said, it was the greatest month I can remember. And she said, you're so lit up. You're always my little light, but you're so much more lit up. And I said, oh, it was definitely because of this. And and she said, she said, well, you should do more of this. I said, well, I, you know, I can't do it from Hawaii, Mama. You know, the time zone difference is so crazy. Uh, just being on the phone with people, trying to help that way, I, I just couldn't do it. And I said, going to events and doing what I did in March, couldn't do it from Hawaii. And, the, and then she said, if you have the gift to be able to give people this type of financial, instant financial freedom, to give them what I have, to give them what other people you helped have, then you need to do it. And I said, oh, I... I appreciate that amount. I said, but I, I would have to leave Hawaii. And she just looked at me. She said, then you need to leave Hawaii. And, and I was like, oh, well, and that's where the whole thing started from was that request. Um, I literally left less than a month later. And, you know, I can go to Hawaii another time. I can go retire there another time. Um, I came mm -hmm. here to be of service, to go to events, to connect with human beings in person. It has been the most uplifting thing I've ever done in my life to literally look people in the eye I mean, right now I'm looking at you. You might be sitting at home, but I looked Tamara in the eye. I looked other people at that event in the eye. And just yesterday at the event, we're at this amazing mastermind, and people are trying to create and do. And they said, wouldn't it be great to have this safety net of cash flow coming in while I'm creating this amazing thing that I want to go give to the world? And, of course, the answer is yes. Anybody should want to have a cash flow of money coming in as a safety net to pursue your dreams, to go do whatever you want to do, whether that's – to be vacationing all over the world, writing books, doing music, becoming an actor, painting. I don't care. The point is, whatever it is you want to do, you have the ability to go do it without there being a financial outcome needed. So that's my last thing. Thank you so much for everybody who's been listening, anybody who listens in the future. And Tamara, thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm sincerely it's appreciative. It's, it's my pleasure. And so as, as we close... Day number 283 of 365 Days of Awesome. Celebrate success through service. Rick, you truly are a service hero. You are. <laughs> Thank you. you have come from a family of service heroes. And and I, I'm so honored to be able to, to highlight you and what it is that you're doing. I know you're going to be helping so many of my friends, so many of my buddies, people within the communities that I am involved, and so many more. Let's just help those that are willing to get out there and, if you will, help themselves. And then that keeps going and helping another because in the end, we all have a service hero inside of us. We all can serve each other. And we all can make a difference in this world. And if we have the ability to do it, and it is through some financial freedom, you know, just think of how many more people we will be serving. So Amen. thank you. Have a great thank day. You. you too. Take care. Bye, everybody. I will bye -bye. be on thank you. tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye.